Hi, I welcome you all to this knowledge gaining session on the eye shaped girder. And taking you along on this journey is Dr. Yunus Jerusha, an assistant professor of physics. The eye shaped girder, whose cross section is in the shape of the letter I, is used for various construction purposes such as in flyovers, bridges, and also in the railway tracks. In order to understand the speciality behind the I-shaped girder, we need to know first of all what is meant by a girder. A girder is a metallic or concrete beam supported at its two ends by pillars or on opposite walls to bear heavy loads and it must not bend or break under its own weight. We've already seen this, that the depression produced by non-uniform bending for a rectangular shaped girder or beam is given by small y is equal to mgl cube divided by 4y bd cube, where m stands for the mass of the load L stands for the length of the beam, capital Y stands for the Young's modulus of the material of the beam, small b standing for the breadth of the beam and small d standing for the thickness of the beam. Our girder should be able to bear heavy loads and undergo minimal or no depression at all. For this to occur, looking at the expression for the depression, we need to have a small length L while the Young's modulus breadth and thickness must be quite large. One solution to reduce the depression which a beam undergoes is to reduce the length of the beam. This cannot be done as the length of the beam is constant for most of the applications. Next, we saw that we can decrease the breadth of the beam. This also is not a viable option and not economical. Therefore, the only solution is to have stronger materials and to increase the thickness D. A small increase in the thickness will drastically reduce the depression since d is to the power of 3. Let us see some examples and arrive at the best solution possible. Here we have taken a stick which is straight and long and when we subject it to a load, the stick undergoes buckling. This increased thickness must be loaded only at the center and not along the entire width of the beam. Therefore, this is not a viable option. Next, let's look at a beam which is short and stocky at the center and has wider flanges at the top as well as at the bottom. For such a type of a beam, buckling will not have any effect. Therefore, this is also not viable. Another option is to have the opposite of what we had earlier, but now a slender and long element with wider flanges at the top as well as at the bottom. This kind of a beam will have no plasticity to be present. Therefore, this is also not viable. Finally, let's have a combination of the beams we saw earlier where we have a medium element which is not so short and stocky nor is it long and slender. This kind of a beam with wider flanges at the top as well as at the bottom will have 
mediocre buckling and plasticity to be present and therefore this is the best option to have a beam which supports heavy loads. Therefore we now know that we require a beam having a large load bearing surface with a large thickness. A large load bearing surface prevents buckling and a large beam thickness reduces bending. The ideal solution having these requirements met is the I-shaped beam or girder. Looking at this I-shaped beam or girder, we see that it has a large load bearing surface at the top as well as at the bottom. These are called as flanges and at the center we have the beam to have a large thickness. This section of the beam is called as the web. The I-shaped girder consists of flanges and a web. Flanges are present at the top as well as at the bottom. The flange at the top is quite broad and the reason why it's so broad is that when a load is applied to this upper flange, it undergoes a compression. This compressive stress travels along the thickness of the beam and is sent to the bottom flange and this bottom flange therefore undergoes an extension. The top flange is attached to the concrete deck above whereas the bottom flange is present inside the ground and it provides strength where tension stresses are at the greatest. Looking at the web, the web material has less material to be present and it's therefore quite efficient and economical. The reason why it's efficient is it provides most of the bending resistance and therefore is quite stiff to any amount of stress which travels along it due to the compression present at the upper flange. The advantages of using an I-shaped girder are as follows. It undergoes a very small depression even for a large dynamical load. It has a very high moment of inertia for the same volume of the given material. It has high stability in the case of bending moments. It can bear high bending and shearing stresses. It does not get twisted and tilted easily. Good amount of material saving occurs with no loss in its strength and it's quite cheaper than solid girders. Some of the disadvantages of the I-shaped girder are it is expensive and hard to maintain. Short spans alone can be constructed economically. Sagging tendency is increased when the bridge span or load is increased. It is used in various areas such as in the construction of bridges over rivers. It is employed in railway tracks and in the construction of buildings and dams. Thank you for your patient listening.